More than 80,000 people are under evacuation orders tonight as the flood crisis worsens. The severe weather that lashed Sydney is now impacting regional communities all the way up to the mid-north coast. Some residents say this is the worst flooding they've ever seen. We have reporters following the major developments. Tim Swanson begins our coverage from the central coast. A reluctant passenger finally scrambling aboard. <laughs> Good boy. This rescue at Chittaway Bay is one of more than 50 carried out across the central coast since the flooding began. Max was just a puppy. That was the last time we got rescued. And that's the perils of living on a lake. Hilary Farrington realised she was in trouble two days ago, but she couldn't find a lift. And my family said, oh, we'll come and get you. And I said, you'll not get through the roads. They're, they're completely gone. Today, heavy rainfall combined with a noon high tide pushed Tuggera Lake above major flood level and inundated lakeside homes. My daughter lives on the corner there and her place is completely under. They had to come here because there's nothing left, nothing. It's amazing, just the yeah, Wyong River going really fast and just, yeah, just never seen so much water around. <laughs> For now, wading and paddling are the main ways to get around. All around Tuggera Lake, water levels pretty high at the moment continue to keep rising. An evacuation order issued yesterday remains in place for low-lying areas. With Tuggera Lake peaking, it's now just a nervous wait for residents to see if this rain will further inundate their properties. With that weather system moving further up the coast, they may have a reprieve from the rain tomorrow. Tim Swanston, ABC News, Chittaway Bay. And Tim joins us now from Chittaway Bay. Tim, Tim, it's still a very tense time for people there. It sure is. And to make matters worse, not only has it been raining for days, but it is coming down very hard right now. The floodwaters on this particular stretch here at Chittaway Bay stretch for hundreds of metres. So not only is access a very difficult issue, but it's also meaning that residents aren't going to be able to start that clean-up for a very long time. Tim Swanston reporting. Across the Hunter, towns are cut off and homes and businesses are underwater. Bindi Bryce has this report. An historic winery is underwater. This time, Mother Nature unleashed on the village of Broke. Some residents are still stranded. No power, no water. We can't get out. We're uh, surrounded on all sides by, uh, by the brook having broken its banks. So... Um, not one of the greatest days. Others managed to be rescued. They're fairy friends too. This town has been flooded before, but locals say not like this. We've had um, had uh, bushfires and COVID. Now this, yeah, not good. Further south, the deluge swallowed the Wallenby Tavern. It's gone up through the top of the doors, basically, is, a, is a, where it's at its maximum. So, yeah, pretty much everything will be gone. A rising Hunter River prompted evacuation orders in Singleton. It's really important uh, to leave the area whilst you can. It was a challenging drive out for those who listened. It is extremely dangerous and it's very deceiving just how deep and how fast that water's moving. Out of town, this farmer moved his horses to higher ground. The farm over there is sort of all underwater at the moment, so, yeah, we're a bit of a putt and go at the minute. And while the rain has eased, the damage has been done, with homes inundated. To give you an idea of how fast the water is rising, yesterday you could see a football field behind me, but today all you can see are the goalposts. It's the town's worst flood in 15 years. The thought of people in town losing their livelihoods is heartbreaking. And it just keeps happening. Bindi Bryce, ABC News, Singleton. And Bindi joins us live now. Bindi, that weather system is moving northwards. Are residents there in the clear now? No, not yet, unfortunately, Jeremy. And that's because the Hunter River is continuing to rise. In the past few hours, it's exceeded the March peak and hit 13.3 metres. And authorities are warning that at some point tonight, it could get as high as 13.8 metres. It means that more businesses and homes here in Singleton could be inundated, including those right here in the middle of town. So it's going to be a sleepless night not just for residents in Singleton, but across the Hunter region. Bindi Bryce reporting. 
There's a severe weather warning for parts of the mid-north coast. Emma Siosin is live for us in Port Macquarie. Emma, what's the latest where you are? Heavy rain, Jeremy, and severe rainfall is expected to... Uh, severe winds are expected to continue throughout the evening here on the mid-north coast, particularly impacting low-lying areas. Residents in some parts are on standby to evacuate. Around Coffs Harbour, some parts have already received 200 millimetres of rain. Some shopping centres are being impacted and residents are advised to expect power outages. Further south on the lower mid-north coast, Many roads and bridges are underwater, including around Lansdowne, where residents have been stocking up. They're coming in buying bread and milk and just may just supply us whatever they can get their hands on, really, so that they're safe. And because the roads down here shut down pretty quickly. And Jeremy, it's hoped this severe weather will start easing here on the mid north coast from tomorrow. Emma Siosian, thank you. Well, the Prime Minister, along with the Premier, have visited flood-affected communities in Sydney's northwest, and Anthony Albanese didn't show up empty-handed. He announced extra cash disaster payments will be available from tomorrow. Here's state political reporter Ashley Raper. Home to a community in need. This is Jodie. Hi, Anthony. I'm Kelly. I'm Jody. Hi, Hi, Kelly. The Prime Minister listened. I walked out with my bag above my head. As residents of South Windsor shared their experiences. Our house is the first to go under every time. Um, this is our third flood this year. And it's taking a toll. No one's going to help me clean up. Out the backyard, I've got chemical containers that have floated in. I've got wood, I've got chairs that have floated in. For those impacted, an extra federal disaster payment of $1,000 per adult and $400 for children will be available from tomorrow afternoon. This is, uh, I believe, the, the quickest that these payments have ever been uh, approved. A speedy delivery of the state's financial help for small businesses is also a priority for the Premier. I was um, disappointed with the pace of the rollout of the grants, particularly at the last event. At this event, both leaders wanted to be clear there was cooperation. It is a seamless relationship uh, that we have, which is what people want to see. There have been 100 ADF personnel on the ground since Monday and the Prime Minister confirmed there were another 150 at the ready. People are exhausted here after facing yet another flood but there's also a sense of frustration and it wasn't enough that the Prime Minister and Premier came offering immediate assistance. They want plans to prevent this from happening. We are looking at long-term solutions. Uh, my government has uh, changed Australia's position on climate change. It would be completely remiss of any good government to be sitting there and saying, well, we're just going to keep doing things the same way. There's a will, but the way forward is still uncertain. Ashley Raper, ABC News, Sydney. Sydney Water is calling on residents in some parts of Western Sydney to start conserving water. It says dam infiltration systems are struggling to keep up with demand. Some communities outside Sydney don't have access to any clean water at all and are relying on aid drops. Our reporter Cayman Gox spent the day on an SES boat delivering supplies around Wiseman's Ferry. Cayman, what's it like out there? It was tough, Jeremy. There is no power and there is no reception and that's making the task even more difficult. We witnessed firsthand the challenges these SES crews are facing in these communities. The conditions can change at any moment and it's not always smooth sailing. Uh, radio, this is Blue 741. It was supposed to be a straightforward supply drop to stranded residents. OK, I'm going to go under those branches there. But every time the SES trek out into floodwaters mercy of Mother Nature. Hello! We're right now on Settlers Road in Lower Macdonald, but you wouldn't be able to tell because the Macdonald River has completely swallowed this road and the SES are travelling in rather sometimes treacherous conditions. You can't just go straight ahead, you're continually trying to adjust to, to get around the poles and the trees. It's an island surrounded by devastation. Dangers up above and down below. It's the police! Some residents needed a lift to safety. Others needed food, generators and petrol. 
There's no power or reception, making the job for SES crews all the more difficult. Without power, we've got no toilet, we've got no running water, we don't have anything. So we get all the help we can get, and we really appreciate the police and everyone else with their efforts. It's not just people, but livestock that are trapped and waiting for help. So many in the Hawkesbury are dependent on the Angels in Orange to get them through yet another disaster. Kevin Gock, ABC News, Wiseman's Ferry. A cargo ship that's been stranded off the coast of Sydney for more than 48 hours has finally made it to shore. Tugboats towed the vessel with 21 crew members on board to Port Botany this afternoon after it lost power on Monday and drifted dangerously close Relief to Relief is cliffs. a really good word. Uh, this, uh, there, there were a couple of points uh, along this uh, where we could have been looking at a, a very different situation. The ship will remain at Port Botany for several days while its engine undergoes repairs. The Australian Transport Safety Bureau and Australian Maritime Safety Authority are investigating the incident.